Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, wherever you are in the world, listening to the sound of my voice today. I pray that God will open your understanding to what I'll be sharing briefly so that we'll be truly formed according to his image as children of God. Father, I pray that everybody listening to me today will be blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, friends, I am looking at the book of Matthew chapter 5 from verses 1 to verse number 11. This is the most revolutionizing uh, scripture that we have. And every believer ought to have an understanding of this scripture because it will cause a seismic change in our lives. We have been seeking what will make us come closer to God, what will make us be truly uh, shaped in his image. So the book of Matthew chapter 5 from verses 1 through verse 11 will be a book that will cause a turning point, that will cause a seismic shift in our lives as believers. So when Jesus saw the multitudes, he went up to a mountain and he was seated. His disciples uh, came to him. Then he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Being poor in spirit means that you are recognizing that we are in need that we are recognizing that there is some deficit in our lives and we need to you know have a change or we need to have a, a reorientation in how we live so when you recognize this there is that tendency to then seek the Lord to then seek what you think is missing and you are drawn closer to God so when you come to that point of being poor in spirit you've had that recognition it goes on to say, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. If you mourn, it means that you're beginning to repent of your self-sufficiency. You're beginning to repent of that ego that is overwhelming in your life as a child of God. And when you get to that state of mind that you begin to mourn, that means you begin to recognize that your self-sufficiency, which you think you have, will not lead you anywhere. Verse 5 says, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. You see, when you are meek, you quit wanting to be the one calling the shots all the time. You, you quit calling the shots about things that concerns you and you seek to surrender to God. You seek to surrender to God for guidance. You seek to surrender to God for protection. You seek to surrender to God for counseling. So, 
that attribute of meekness makes you want to yield all aspects of your life to God. When any child of God or any human being do that, that is an open expression of wanting to be ruled by God, of wanting to be guided by God, of wanting is leading in all aspects of your life. When you get God's leading, when you get God's guidance, when you get God's counseling, there is no how you will make mistakes. There is no how you will be found wanting. You may face challenges, but challenges become the step ladder to your success or your victory. Going on, it says, Blessed are those who hunger and they taste for righteousness, for they shall be filled. When you hunger and taste for righteousness, it means that you are grateful for God's presence in your life. You are grateful for God's ambience around you. You are grateful for God's control of your life. That makes you grow closer to him and then you become more like him. It's like experiencing a kind of metamorphosis. You begin to morph into someone closer to God from your original state of mind such that people around you will notice that there is something going on that is not the usual that is not business as usual people around you will notice in the way you speak in your mannerisms in your demeanor in your association that there is something that is happening to you that is for good so then you become more like him for any believer to become more like our lord that is the ultimate that we would desire. You become more and more so that your walk with God will be less of a struggle but will be your normal lifestyle. It then becomes your way of life. Not as a religion. All right? Not as somebody trying to please a taskmaster. You live naturally what the scriptures you know, says you know, and how the scriptures have prescribed for us to live as believers. The scriptures are our guidebook because it stays the mind of God. Hallelujah. So, we're going to the seventh verse. It says, Blessed are the merciful. You see, when we are merciful, we begin to forgive those who wrong us. We begin to forgive people who transgress us. We begin to forgive our enemies. And there is nothing more pleasing to God than for believers to begin to forgive one another. 
that ushers in the love of God, you know, shared abroad amongst us, we begin to have a pulling factor, you know, of one to another, which leads us to victory. When we forgive others, there is this peace of God which passeth all understanding that exudes from our lives. You see, that is one of the most difficult things for believers to do. Because the act of forgiveness is not something natural to a human being. The act of letting peace reign is not how a human being should normally operate. I mean, life is survival of the fittest. It is tit for tat. It is, you know, somebody wrongs you, you pay back in their own coin. So, when a believer begins to exhibit the ability to forgive, that is one of the best promotional attributes we can exhibit. Promotion in terms of spiritual upliftment and attracting, you know, good vibes to ourselves, attracting God's attention to ourselves. Hallelujah. Looking further, we'll see. Blessed are the poor, pure in heart, verse 8, for they shall see God. When we are pure in heart, there is this ability to attract the personality of the Holy Spirit in our lives. The Holy Spirit is our comforter when Jesus Christ left the earth when he ascended into heaven. The third personality of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, was left with us to be our comforter. And the way it works is that he dwells in us. Our bodies have become his dwelling place. He does not dwell in temples made with hands. So, when we have pure in heart, it's like we are able to accommodate the influence of the Holy Spirit. We are able to accommodate the counseling of the Holy Spirit. We are able to accommodate the guidance, the direction, the leadership of the Holy Spirit. That makes you someone who is now more sensitive to the guidance, to the leadership, to the control of God. That makes you able to have that power to do the things you are expected to do without struggle. When you are pure in heart, it's like when you go into a physical room that is very clean and organized with a very good ambience, you are able to sit comfortably in that room and do what you want to do. You can stay there and relax. You can stay there and eat. 
you'll be comfortable. Rather than entering a room or a house that is full of garbage, that is full of stench, you will not want to stay there for long. That is just an example of how being pure in heart allows for the Holy Spirit to indwell us, to guide us, to comfort us. So the possibility of living a life of a Christian now becomes far more easy and pleasing than we ever imagined. There are so many things that the flesh will drag you to want to do, which will mitigate against your growth as a Christian. It will mitigate against your flow with God. Being pure in heart is very, very important for a believer. Hallelujah. Verse 9 says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. You see, when you are a peacemaker, there's hardly any issues of contention that will manifest around you because you know how to deal with it. Being a peacemaker helps us as believers to manifest that power, that light that we have as believers. So, blessed are you when you are persecuted for righteousness sake. That is verse 10. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. When you uh, suffer injustice, you when you endure injustice, as we all know, that the world is full of injustice. There is a huge perversion of justice by the rich, by the powerful, by the mighty. When you are able to endure injustice, it says you are blessed. Especially if it is for righteousness sake. You are enduring injustice because you don't want to be like, like them. You don't want to tag along. You are enduring being left alone. You are enduring being left without friends. You are enduring being persecuted because you stand for the truth. It says you are blessed. And now verse 11. It says, Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all things evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. I took it down to verse 12. So, that is the summation of the Beatitudes where Jesus taught on the mount. I want to let you know that for we believers, there are certain things we ought to begin to do, certain deliberate steps we need to begin to take to cause a seismic shift in our lives 
and lead us closer to God. Hallelujah. I want you to make it deliberate today to begin to look deeply into the book of Matthew chapter 5 right from verse 1 to 11 and 12 and your lives will be transformed for the better. Hallelujah. God bless you as you apply these principles to your lives. In Jesus' name, Amen.